Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Progress Report, in which I um, talk about the progress that I'm making in my game development things and stuff. We're in a room! The room has doors! The doors are new! Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing that I have to report this, this week. I mean, it's a weekly thing. What do you expect? So yeah, doors. I added doors. There's doors. You go into a door by walking through the door. It's all very simple, really. But it's amazing what these kinds of doors do for like immersion and making everything feel like a coherent whole. Ooh, look, it's a library. That's another thing I did. So we had, I showed you the bookshelves with the tomes last time. Um, now actually a certain percentage of rooms are going to be libraries. They don't look skinned yet because I don't have different tiles, but they will look different from a normal room like this one, which just has some crates and stuff in it. Also the royal chest. If you don't remember, the royal chest is spawned on every floor and gives you um, good stuff. So yeah, the doors. Um, so this is, for those who are interested in the technical details, just a tile that is passable or walkable, but it blocks sight. And then when you walk on it, it's a, the, the actual door is a tile entity. When you walk on it, it um, changes state and changes the floor tile under the door to a floor tile that does have um, sight through it. So that's that's interesting. Mops can also go through the door, although it's going to be very hard for me to showcase that, so I'm probably not going to. Um, yeah, it's it was a lot easier to just let mobs go through the door than um, making it so they naturally wouldn't. So what happens when a mob goes through the door? While it's on the door, it's open, but mobs close doors behind them, except if they're opened by the player already. So an open door will stay open. There's no way to close doors because you open them by moving into them. And I have no idea how I would make it so you could close them again in a universal interface. Also, it wouldn't be that useful, even though people have already asked about this. Now, another thing about doors is that's kind of interesting, at least I think so. It's not just, you know, go around the perimeter of a, of a room and add doors. By the way, there's no door here because sometimes there's a chance there won't be a door because otherwise there's too many doors. I'm just saying the word door so many times it has literally lost all meaning. But yeah, you can see there's a two tile, you know, corridor between the, this room and the library over here. So the naive approach would just create doors and then you would have like a door here and then another door right behind it, which is really dumb. So what? what the level generator does oh look another library that's that's so cool with an ornate chest i'm just having all the luck today so yeah what the level generator does is the rooms spawn their doors but they they tell the 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 level generator where they want their doors and then the level generator just has a certain threshold like if you have a corridor and there's two doors then, and they're like spaced a certain distance apart, then it will just merge them. So you don't get like double doors that don't make sense. Another thing I did, so you notice that once I got the tome, I stopped attacking these bookshelves. Bookshelves used to have like a, a, a just a built in drop chance, but you have a, a random number of libraries every floor you have a random number of bookshelves in every library room. So sometimes you would get like two tones in a floor and sometimes you would get like 15, which is like you get like two rows of t uh, to tomes in one level and it's just not good. So what I did is every library has one bookshelf that drops a tome. I'm just dispelling all the magic for you guys. I'm so sorry. Let's see what's in this chest. Oh, I actually have two yellows. That's quite fortunate. Another thing I did, I tweaked the loot curves a bit. I'm going to tweak them a bit more. Basically, Epic and Legendary have been going to be very rare because what happened once I had all this other stuff dropping loot is that higher level items became way too um, common. 
So, for those of you who don't know, the rarities in the game are no colour, which is common, blue, which is uncommon, yellow, which is rare, orange, which is epic, and then purple, which is legendary. So, I'm actually gonna turn down rare drops a little bit more, and maybe increase common and uncommon a little bit. But other than that, the loot curves seem right. Now, another thing that I need to do, which I haven't done yet, is the mobs are um, a bit underpowered now there's so much loot in the game. They were balanced for... Um, I'm just opening doors, because, you know, doors. I wish I could find uh, something that will open a door for me. Are you guys gonna gonna open this door? No, no, you're not. You're really not. What about you, guy? If you just go here twice, then no, he's not gonna do that. So yeah, um, I was saying like mobs are a bit underpowered because they were balanced for there being a lot less loot, so they were actually balanced for the player having an incomplete set of items for the first couple of floors. Um, with the new changes, they're gonna. Yeah, they're not going to open the door. With the changes, they're going to be boosted more. Um, I also know Fireball, which now has a lower minimum damage. Had someone still got killed in the new build with it, so that's still good. It's still a powerful ability, it's just less powerful. I may still change that to like an AoE ability with less damage later, but AoE is not currently a thing that I have in the game. So, that's a thing. Anyway! That's uh, basically it for, the, for, for this episode of the Progress Report. Um, I'll be back with uh, more next week. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye!